Team 18 had a rough 2023 season, but they have reason to be optimistic for 2024. It was their first year building their own cars in 2023. With that comes teething issues. It's their first time building their own cars. They're not an experienced uh, race team as a unit. The individuals have experience, but as a Team 18 itself has only run main game supercars. After Charlie Schwerkolt got rid of Lee Holdsworth at the end of 2018, I sort of lost interest in that team and I wasn't as much a fan in 2019. But this video isn't called Why I Hate Team 18. Uh, I was a fan before, but the, after they got rid of Lee Holdsworth, I thought, oh, what a bunch of bastards. But I listened to the Rusty's Garage podcast where they, he did a two-parter with Charlie Schwerkolt, and it was just interesting hearing what Charlie had to say about, about the team and how far it's come along and what the thought process was behind all of these decisions. Hearing what he had to say made me think differently about Team 18. And I'd been a member of, of Team 18 in 20, 2020 to 2021, technically, but also in 2022. Pretty much every year they had James Golding. Uh, team 18 was my team. It was good in 2020 because it was like, oh, I'm part of like a competitive racing team that's doing really well. And it was a bit the same in uh, with Premier now as well. Team 18 is one of those, it's been building for a long time and it's not like Charlie is a, a former race driver, it's not like he's a former mechanic or anything like that, like he is the only guy running his own team, he's, he's just like the only guy who's kind of just a rich guy running a race team, but it's not really the facts, he gets the manager and the manager runs that. But, obviously in 2023, after Bathurst, Bruin Beasley left the team. And I thought it was because of the of what happened at Bathurst, where both cars had to be refueled in the last lap, and uh, Mark Winterbottom was classified a DNF because he wasn't on the track when the race finished. And Scott Pye managed to get out in time and dropped a 17th. They actually had good race pace and they were amongst the fastest cars that weekend. It was really disappointing for them because they haven't had the best time at Bathurst. Charlie said it It seems like every time they go there, there's an issue with the car. 2020, they got 6th and 8th and that was such a great result for them. And 2020 was a great year to be part of that team because they just seemed to be so competitive. And both cars in the top 10 of the championship at the end of the year and the, the three podiums with Scott Pye, it seemed like they were like a rising force. But it was sort of lucky, I guess. There were a few things that went wrong in other teams. So they had a great year in 2020. 2021 comes along. It was just struggle straight on Scott Pye's car. Mark Winterbottom seemed to be going from strength to strength, uh, getting better, having a just a closer chance at getting a podium. Watching Sand down and watching that tight battle with like four cars going for the win, and you thought it's gotta be soon. He's gotta get a win or a podium or something. It's always so close, but so far, and he he managed to get it last year with the Gen Three car, qualified well, had great race pace, didn't stuff up the pit stop, and for a supercars team, pit stop practice is absolutely crucial. Matt Stone Racing have only recently invested in a pit stop car. They need to have a practice car, one that's got the same one-nut wheels that the supercars have all got. And these are all, like, modified cars. You can't just buy a car and do that. You know, your standard road car's got, like, five nuts on the wheel to hold it on. On a supercar, it's got this massive one-nut thing that hangs on. It's a system that's worked really well. It's With Gen 3, it's a bit different because they've had to, they've had to redesign the entire nut and the way it all goes on, and it's smaller and they've had wheels coming off the cars for several parts of the year, but they managed to get on that and have a great pit stop and get a win. Matt Stone Racing as well. They got rid of Scott Pye at the end of 2023. Times like that, you think, oh, it's not really fair. Scott Pye's doing a good job. He's getting screwed over, but you just it, it was, every championship finish was worse than the next. I think Mark Winterbottom came ninth in 2022. It was He just got an amazing result. And he's just been consistent. He's been the benchmark driver of the team. And the way Charlie talked about the way these things happen is it's not because. It's not just a, oh, you're not good enough for getting someone else. Or um, what I read in uh, Dick Johnson's book from 2013. It's not just Charlie going for the next famous guy. 
because Char- uh, Scott Pye wasn't a famous guy. He was like a young guy coming through who was actually doing very well. It was a solid choice for the second car for 2020. And now they're getting David Reynolds. And I'm thinking, oh, really? Why, why are you getting David Reynolds? Uh, not to say Dave's a bad driver, but just sort of a curious choice. Why not go down the young guy route like a lot of these teams are going down? Is there a young guy you can grab? You know, pinch Kai Allen or something. Give Declan Fraser a chance. The way Charlie talked about it is it's, you get up to the end of contracts and you have a look at what the possibilities are, what the best opportunities are, and what they decided to do. Scott Pye had his, t- his two-year contract at the start with 2020, 21. At the 21 wasn't as great, as good as 20, but he'd definitely shown he could do a great job. And they said, yep, let's roll on. Let's see what the next contract brings. And it was not as good. Um, and it's a similar story to Stephen Richards at Full Performance Racing. Stephen Richards did 2007, 2008, he won races. And 2010, he came 15th in the championship, and they said, see you, mate. But they gave him a chance to come back for Bathurst, and that resulted in a Bathurst win. So, you know, those sometimes things just work like that. And the team benefited out of signing Will Davison as well. So that's just the way things go sometimes. But it's a great comparison because Stephen Richards just did slightly worse in the championship every year until he went from, uh, what was it, 7th to 15th in four years. In Scott Pye, went from 9th to 18th in four years um and look every every experienced guy in the field seems to have grabbed themselves a two-year deal so it's, it's worked out for everyone dave reynolds didn't want to be on a one-year deal at groves so he's got the two-year deal at team 18 and triple eight wanted the two-year co-driver so they got scott pie james courtney's got a two-year deal at blanchard's nick Perkat got a two-year deal at matt stone racing like every experienced guy got a two-year deal and then I was thinking, what's the opportunities that you can get out of signing David Reynolds? And I'm thinking, maybe a full a full year sponsor, because you got to think Scott Pye has just been on the rolling sponsorship deal. They just have not been able to get one to do the whole year. They've just had it changing every race. And in terms of changing liveries, the different liveries looking great. And especially my favourite one of 2023 was the BP one at the Bend. It was just an amazing looking car, so good to look at. I wish they ran it all year. And the other one at the Gold Coast, the uh, Team Samurai Hino one, looked really good, and the car was fast. It was a very cool livery for that weekend. Um, Another thing, it seems, since they started building their own cars, is less mechanical problems. I don't think we saw either of those cars in the garage as much as we saw them in the last two or three years that they were running Triple Eight cars. The thought process behind that was to build their own cars. Charlie was hesitant about it. He didn't want to do it. But Bruin and the engineers and the guys were saying, like, I'm sure Richard Holway had a key a key say in it because he's been he's been there, done that for Holden Racing Team, Gary Rogers, and he knows how it all works and the advantage you can get from just controlling everything you do. The team had experienced that when they started doing their own power steering in 2022. They had less failures on the car. I don't know what the failure was at Adelaide 500, but I think it was the engine um, or something like that. Some sort of uh, actual go-fast bit broke. They convinced Charlie, we can do it. We can build our own car and it's going to be of our benefit. I think the only team that didn't build their own cars was Premier Racing. They decided, look, we're going to go and just do the team, the Triple Eight thing. But Team 18 said, you know what, we're really ready to take a swing at this and and go down our own path, really, and start doing our own thing. You look at the team's championship every year, and Team 18 was 6th in 2020, 7th in 21 and 22, and in 23 they were 8th. It's a tough competition, but also they were going through their own teething issues. They beat Premier, who had triple eight cars, and arguably had a faster car at times, but they, they struggled as well. But Premier got their own issues. They haven't got the team that Team 18 have got where they've got lots of experienced guys, they've got lots of people who are just focused on getting everything bang on perfect every time. One of the important things that Charlie has talked about is that it's about making sure you get the right people. Like I was thinking of comparing them to Erebus because the only that's the only other team where it's just kind of a rich person who owns a race team, but Barry Ryan is a very experienced operator. He was at Perkins, he was at Kelly Racing. He's been there, done that in, in racing. So when they got him involved, 
um, and he pretty much makes it all work. Uh, Betty will make decisions on what to do about staffing and stuff like that, and because she's the one that pays the bills at the end of the day. At Team 18, it's a little bit uh, different. They, they're a bit smaller. Uh, they don't have a guy like Barry Ryan, um, but they do have some experienced guys, and they used to have some very experienced other guys in uh, Phil Keed and Steve Henderson. Steve Henderson was the team manager from 2019 till 2021, I think, and then he left, and he's not in the field today. He's not anywhere in the in the paddock so he's uh, I guess decided to leave supercars and do something else and so they got Bruin Beasley in 22 and that seems that that worked quite well for them but then Bruin actually left for his own personal reasons not because of what happened at Bathurst and I thought it was very very premier of them to get rid of Manuel Sanchez and I don't know the name of the data engineer on Mark Widderbottom's car that weekend I'll put it up on the screen who they got rid of because it's just like you cannot have these sorts of results whatever they were doing they were not focusing on what was important which was making sure the fuel was good and as long as the fuel's good then you can finish the race it was emba- it would have been terribly embarrassing to go from having a shot at some good points to dropping way down the order had to make a call get someone else in and they actually brought somebody back who used to work for them. I'll put their name up on the screen because on the top of my head I cannot think of it. I don't know if anyone's noticed, that's kind of a lot of my videos are off the top of my head. I'll do a bit of research like today. I watched some videos, um, I read some articles just to sort of work out what was going on there. It seems like it's in a, they're in a good position to improve on 2023 for 2024. David Reynolds brings the opportunity as a Bathurst winner to get them that permanent full year sponsorship being the uh, the great guy he is or the great personality that he is he is attractive to sponsors how many times have you seen david reynolds driving around without a sticker on his car this doesn't happen we've seen james courtney at tickford have it and jake james courtney is a great personality and they just they didn't weren't able to get one for the full year straight away until they got snow caravans and snow river caravans has been there forever since 2022 they're ticking over for another two years you know with david reynolds he had a great relationship with penwright but penwright are looking well do we go with dave the team 18 or do we go with grove racing who are looking like they're going to win championships and races and do really well and it seems like a great environment for them to be part of i'm sure we might see uh, penwright on dave's helmet though but the charlie schwerkolt interview with rusty he said look the stuff with dick johnson happened and then he went down the path of running his own car. Apparently, there was no hesitation. He was he was sure he wanted to do it. There was not he can't really he can't remember what the thought process was back then, but it didn't seem like a huge step for him to do it. I think in, he said in 2023, building their own cars the first time they had brand new cars since he bought the FPR car in 2013. So I guess whatever he ran at Walkinshaw in 2015 was the same car that. Russell Engel had run in 2013, so he had like a, a two-year-old car at the Adelaide 500 in 2015. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case, but they he said that it was just annoying feeling like you were the fourth car in the order in terms of priority. Sometimes it was the case, but then um, in 2019, Will Davison was effectively the fourth car uh, at Tickford, but he was... He wasn't the worst car in the championship. Lee Holdsworth was. Maybe Phil Monday has a bit more mongrel in him and said, the best or I'm not here. Charlie went down his own path and he said he thinks Team 18 was the most recent team to have started from scratch. And I thought, that's not true. Premier built their own thing. And I thought, well, that's not exactly true, is it? Because they had a drag racing team. It's not as from scratch as... For Charlie, it was he had to get himself a premises with Premier. They ran it from Premier Hire for a while. They actually had a place, but I guess Waverley Forklifts was a premises that they could have uh, based the thing out of. They are based at Mount Waverley. They could be next door. It, it's a looks like a very professional base. Like this is where the cars go. It's got an office. It's got everything it needs. It's not the biggest facility, but it looks like they've got everything they need there. So they went down that path of. Uh, running their own team, and they brought he brought Lee Holdsworth with him, so Lee was the driver for for three years 
in, in the solo outfit, but he was with them with Walkinshaw as well. And giving a guy four years of his career, people watching how Lee raced, Lee was able to get good results when the car was right. And he was very impressive when the car was right as well. Newcastle 2018, Newcastle 2017. And I think I read somewhere someone said, oh, in 2017 they had a really rough time. I think I read it somewhere. I don't think Charlie said it. Pretty much every weekend or every other weekend qualifying in the top 10, there were two solo teams that were doing that. It was Techno and Team 18. Will Davison and Lee Holdsworth were imagined to stick their cars in the top 10 pretty regularly. Not all the time, but every other race. They were qualifying well. N- it didn't necessarily race well because then you've got to get the pit stops right and you've got to get, like, sometimes things fail in the car and sometimes you get into a bingle with someone else. There's things like that. It's Lee did a great job and was able to demonstrate it and get himself, though, like, what just turned out to be a very successful career. Like, it wasn't the worst option. But I was pretty frustrated that he, um, that Lee was gone. I was upset about that because it felt like he was going to miss out on a drive and you always get worried when it feels like that's going to happen. In 2016, though, uh, I, I read something somewhere a while ago that they were supposed to have this a uh, AAA technical alliance where you've got like, the latest parts, and I don't know if that's exactly what Charlie said. He was interviewed at the pre-season test in 2016, and he said, we're going to have what Techno's got, uh, or we've got what, what Techno's got. And you got to think, it's not like the cars are getting done up to the latest spec every year it's if they want to they can buy those upgrades what 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 happened was you know, they had jamie come in and drive lee holdsworth's car in 2016 and point him in the right direction in terms of setup uh, he didn't see quite a lot of that in 2017 and 18 because they'd gone down their own path in terms of front uprights and they were very competitive in 2017 especially at newcastle i remember uh, that that was one of the things that was referenced was how good their uprights were. And then they switched to a different aerodynamic model with the ZB and it just did not feel right. The car didn't work the same. So they kind of had to undo all of their own work and start all over again. It was just a very a struggle street all year. But Mark Winterbottom was in struggle street at Tickford so Charlie took that opportunity to grab Mark Winterbottom and Mark said, look, this is what I want. You know, if you can get that, then this is going to be fine. And so Charlie had to talk to Renee Witterbottom, Mark's wife, and said, look, Charlie had to sell the, the Winterbottoms on a very good deal. Like, you've got Irwin Tools, you've got a Triple Eight Technical Alliance car, and the car was better than what Lee had, well, was better than the car that they had, which was, I think, in 2016, um, it was not the latest spec Triple Eight. Uh, and then they went down their own development path. And latest spec, he had the ZB prototype car. So that's what they had. And he got Phil Keed, who had been at DJR Team Penske with Fabian Coulthard. And um, they decided to put somebody else as engineering that car and put him on gardening leave. And then they gave him to Charlie and let him off gardening leave a bit early in December of 2018 then they got steve henderson who had been hadn't been in supercars for a while uh, but he had been the team manager at fpr back in the day in 29 2009 2010 um i said phil keed was at fpr and he was directly engineering mark winterbottom but i don't think that that was true because now mark winterbottom doesn't have the best memory and i know that because when i asked him about manuel sanchez in 2020 He'd kind of, he, he, I guess he kind of forgotten him. It was probably very recent for him to be like, oh yeah, that's my new engineer. But, you know, I had noticed that they'd signed quite a few GRM people to Team 18. But I, I'm not, I'm going to have to double check this and put it up on the screen. I don't think Phil Key directly engineered Mark Winterbottom. If I was going to guess, I'd say he was engineering um, Stephen Richards. Once, once it all gets explained in what the thought process is behind why these decisions get made and the actual proper difficulties and the Team 18 Insider series is actually really good at showing um, just what they go through and how much detail they have to go through to get things bang on right. It's it's really difficult and they're not stripping down the cars and rebuilding them every, uh, in between every race. They're going to do whatever they've got the time to do. They're not going to do a complete 
redo it in their Team 18 Insider Series. They did, said they didn't have a chassis jig, so they had to send it to Walkinshaw after Scott Pye's Perth crash. Like, at, and, and at that Perth crash, you saw uh, Jamie Winkup coming and talking to Charlie about rebuilding the car or whatever. They don't do that in 2023 and 2024 because these are Team 18 cars. These aren't 888 cars. They have to go down their own path. They were competitive in Adelaide. They were actually they were actually had pretty fast cars. If Team 18 make an improvement on their car, what is 2024 going to look like? Like, even in DJR's worst year in years, they came fifth in the championship. Um, sometimes if you simplify it and just be like, oh, the best drivers win the races, sometimes you see a driver who hasn't done all that well in recent years jump into a competitive a competitive seat and suddenly start doing really well. No, you could have said people have written off David Reynolds until Grove started pouring money into the team and signing all the good people and getting their engine up to up to scratch and building better cars. Suddenly they were racking up podiums all the time. Pole position at Gold Coast, they were fast. They had a shot at uh, at the winner Bathurst, Lee Holdsworth on the front row and Quali, and then he led the race at the start. You just you kind of have to go with the weak links, and I don't think Team 18 have got any obvious weak links. They're probably the weakest in terms of... No, I, I, I said they could potentially beat Matt Stone Racing, which they, they already did this year, but they could do it again. It's so hard to predict what's going to happen. You just sort of have to look at what's going on in each team, like any personnel changes, how sponsorship going, and then you have to keep looking at about across the board to work out what team is potentially going to drop a spot. You know, DJR are changing personnel. They've got Perry Capper on Anton Lee Pasquale's car. They've got um, Ludo's gone. They've got and there's Ryan Story back in the picture. He's going to be uh, the team principal again. Ben Croke is going to drop back down to team manager, and so they've done stuff like that. You know, there's things like that that make it possible that things might change and things do change uh, every year and especially with the, the new regulations we have really no idea what's going to happen there's suddenly going to be you have to look at what teams are affected by parity and whether they were underperforming or whether they were just uh, affected by parity when hrt had a terrible year in 2010 the missing factor it seems was some of those key personnel who were there when they were winning championships so they didn't have Richard Holway, they didn't have Jeff Gregg, they didn't have, they didn't have stuff like that. So yeah, that's I think that's my video for Team 18. It's going to be interesting seeing how they go. But I thought it'd be interesting. Definitely give the the two part Rusty's Garage a listen. It's definitely worth it.